Hey friends, it's Whitney, your host with Needles Embroidery. Today I'm going to show you how to put together a reusable menstrual pad and um, let's see, I have a video on this but I have actually since then updated the way that I do things with my menstrual pad so I thought I would share and also this way I can get pictures for my my instructions for when you go and buy it on my Etsy shop at Needles EC. So let's get started. Here are the things that you're going to need. You're going to want some terry cloth. This is for the bottom layer. It's for your um, your core fabric. This is just the mainstay Walmart towel. Um, but of course, you can buy the terry cloth from the, from yardage. I haven't done that yet, but I plan on, because I make these quite often, um, buying in bulk would actually be a better idea. So you're going to need some terry cloth for the absorbency. For the top of the pad, for the core part of your pad, and um, if you want a really cute decorative bottom, you're going to want some, some more fabric. I chose to go with a flannel type material. This has been washed and so it will uh, help absorb some more of that blood. I love to use minky on my pads. This goes on the top layer of my pad and I love the stuff up against my skin. Now my local stores have just started selling the minky that don't have the dots. So if you don't want the dots, you can either iron them out or after a few washings, they're going to be, they're just going to disappear anyway. So um, I don't really worry about wearing minky dot fabric, but you may want to choose either like the plain, the plain stuff or, or iron it out before you use it. If that's going to, if that texture is going to bother you. Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk to you about that you're going to need is a waterproof lining. So I have two different kinds of waterproof lining. And this, this is completely up to you what you want to use. But this fabric is more like tent waterproof waterproofing. I mean, I bought a whole bunch. It was on sales. It was on sale when um, one of our local fabric stores went out of business and I just bought everything that they had. But for this one, the waterproofing is on the inside and then the outside is a really soft fabric. So I could actually just use this if I wanted to, but I still put it on the inside of my pads just because the, of the stretch. I, I really don't want it to pull away when once my stitches go through. I haven't tried it on the outside yet, but yeah, I, I'm kind of hesitant to do that. But this, this is one option. It's a tent material. And actually I have used other tent material and it works just fine. But this is what is most commonly used. It's um, Pull P-U-L. It's a waterproof lining fabric specifically for projects like this and for breast pads and stuff like that but um, this one's a little bit more durable it doesn't have as much stretch as this one here okay and this one though will add more bulk to your to your pad so depending on if you're trying to go for a really thin pad then this tent material is probably what you want to use. But if if you don't really mind and um, the bulk, then this this fabric, the PUL or PLU or whatever it's called, um, waterproof lining fabric uh, is the way to go. So that is what you're going to need for the basic construction of the pad for your hoop. Currently, I only have a pad that will fit inside the large hoop. This is a 14 by 7 and 7 eighths hoop. And 
Um, I'm working on a 5x7 pad. I've had lots of requests for those. So I'm, I'm working on it. I really am. Um, but if there's also another one, another pad of mine that's 12 inches long that will fit in this hoop as well. So I'm working on that one as well. So lots of things going on with the uh, menstrual pads. I'm just, it's all still in the process. Okay. So for your lining, you are going to want this amazing um, cutaway stabilizer. This is a no-show mesh stabilizer. It is classified as a as a cutaway. And I love this stuff because it gives this ability to the pad that I need without the bulk. Because later, when I go to flip the pad inside out, it's hard trying to flip out cutaway, medium weight cutaway stabilizer. So, I'm just going to put everything in there like that. Actually, that's not very, that's not very good. I'm going to take that out and try it again. Better, much better. Okay, the alternative to hooping the stabilizer is hooping your terry cloth. Okay, and you will go through more terry cloth that way. But I have done, I have done it both ways, where I hoop the terry cloth and the top layer. So I, I've done it both ways, where I've done it like this. Try to get it without that seam. Okay, where I've hooped this and my flannel down but I was going through so much and it was I couldn't use use it again so what I decided to do was just not hoop those things and um, just hoop the stabilizer that way when my placement guide stitch goes down then I can lay it right on those lines and then I don't have to worry about wasting okay so let me go get this to the machine and I will be right back. Okay, I have several layers here and the problem with being a seamstress is that you find fibers and all sorts of stuff on everything all the time. <laughs> okay, um, now once you get to the core part and it stitches down, it looks like a dog bone. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Um, you are going to want to cut the excess away of just this part. You actually don't have to cut anything else away. I've tried to make it really simple where you only have to cut one time in the hoop and then you remove everything and then cut the excess away and it's beautiful. So, I am using my Spoonbill scissors. Love these scissors for projects like this because the spoon bill actually prevents you from digging into the fabric that, is, that your applique is on top of. So I lay it fairly flat on my, on my hoop and with a lifting motion of the excess fabric, I just start trimming away. And your first couple ones may take a while to trim all the way around, but yeah, take your time. The way that I have changed this pad up is that I have put this core part with the terry cloth on the very inside. So when, and this core part is actually slightly smaller than the top layer that goes on top. And I'm really excited about it because it will hide all this frayed edging because terry cloth frays really bad. I mean, it has, it sheds. I mean, it's just as bad as minky dot right here. So if you can cut down on the fibers floating around in your room, that's better. Okay, so 
once you put your top layer of your applique on it will actually go over it'll it'll be larger than this core part all right finishing up going around ta-da okay now now the next thing that we're going to do is put our flannel let me zoom back out here our flannel part and oh I said that there was only one thing to have to cut out now that I put I moved the core portion on the inside of this now you're gonna have to cut out twice I'm so sorry I misled you so I'm going to have um, let's see I can actually do cut this out cut it up here we want it slightly larger because it may pull to the inside just a little bit just keep your fingers back you don't want to join that club where you have needles in your fingertips oh oh my goodness if you have run your finger over with your sewing machine or your embroidery machine leave pictures in the comments below I want to see it's it's nasty that's one club that I do not want to be a part of you can keep your membership to yourself <laughs> just cutting this out because I really don't want this piece accidentally caught up in it okay so I'm going to line it up just like so now it's going to go and do the tack down stitch for for the applique the top core of the applique part now there are two stitch lines for this the first one is um, the sewing let me see what's the word the run pitch okay so that that means the the distance between stitch to stitch so the first one is the is the placement guide stitch and it is only it's four millimeters distance okay so they're pretty far apart and then the second it's like a basting stitch then the then the second stitch is your tack down stitch and that is two millimeters spaced apart so it's smaller and that's really going to hold this down for you so if you are going to skip a step then please skip the first one the applique placement guide stitch and go to the second stitch where it has the actual tack down properties to the stitching because I don't want this to come up and it shouldn't because you're gonna have a zigzag stitch on it anyway but if you choose not to do the zigzag stitch you don't want this to come up okay because that inner core part is gonna be nasty all right let's get this to the machine and um, 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 um yeah and then we'll have to come back and cut this out
now we get to do the fun part and that's just taking everything out of the hoop and if you did it right and you don't have and you didn't get any fabric caught up in it your hoop should come right off your fabric and you can either choose to cut off the excess like that but I'm just gonna go straight through and start cutting. You can do one layer at a time, you can do multiple layers at a time, and actually if I do multiple, I'm gonna use my gingers. Gingers to the rescue. What is your favorite pair of scissors? Leave them in the comments below. Mine are gingers, although when I first started ugh, using gingers, they were so heavy in my hand, it was ridiculous ridiculous oh I forgot to take a picture for my for my instructions
back stitch. And you're done. Trim away these jump stitches here. But it is sewn down. Look at that. Look how nice. And now I did leave the sewing machine stitch length at two millimeters just because I want to make sure that this thing is going to stay closed. Okay? The following step is to put your snaps on. Here I have two different kind of snaps. These, these are cam snaps. You can either go with matching color, with pink, or, or whatever matches the color that you're doing. I have um, done white. I haven't actually done the colors. I just bought these. I got them off of Amazon and I got like the rainbow set and I'm excited to try these. These are size 20. I think they're going to be just fantastic Ugh. to go with my pads. Okay, cut a little opening. You're going to want a female part and a male part for both sides and this is where it kind of gets tricky because you actually have to um, make sure that one part is going up with the with the uh, snap on it and the other part is going down and I actually got the wrong part there are two bottom parts. So let me zoom in here so you can see those and the difference. Actually, I might have to lift them up. Okay, that, every snap is going to have this. Every snap, okay, is going to have that. One snap is going to have an inside or what we call a female part and one is going to have a male part and any in and outy okay so when we put these in I actually have to put the male part or the female part where they will snap shut okay so I'm gonna go right to my circle that had stitched out so nicely for me try to find the center of it and poke all the way through and this tool right here comes with with the clamp and I really work that tool around in that hole because um, the minky dot makes it really hard sometimes to see or for the this part to go all the way through Okay, I'm going to take my bottom part and the way that this works is this top part will actually fit down in a seat so make sure that it's well seated and I, I did have a lady who suggested who bought this pattern and she suggested um, uh, Velcro and you know I haven't used Velcro yet but that would work and it's a really smart idea I hadn't thought of it myself okay I can't get that open I think I need to go get my bigger one there we go okay take a picture for the instructions okay squeeze that part down okay 
Now flip it over. Now the other part is going to have this tab going from the opposite side with the snap part on the top. Okay. Okay, really work that around. Yeah, haven't tried that before. <laughs> okay, now, now that it's in there, uh, all right. Sorry, I'm trying to trying to do this and get that instructions for people who want to buy this. Squeeze tight. I mean, you want to be firm with it. You don't want it to come unsnapped while you're wearing it. But shake that off. Look at there. We have a finished pad. Girls, that's so pretty. Well, that makes me happy. Last picture. Now, once it's on your panties, it'll snap like that. It'll be nice and long and hold in place. Okay, and then this is how I close them up. I fold one end to the center, the other end to the center, wrap snugly this is also how I um, store them in my purse now because this one's new it's a little bit tighter but with time it will be a little bit more stretchy Love it. Love it. And I love that the pink matches the pink. I'm such a silly person like that. But there we go. There is the finished pad. Waterproof lined. You have your core interior. This one I would actually like to say that it's a medium weight, a medium absorbency because we have one layer of the terry cloth and then a one layer for the core inside the ter for the terry cloth but you can do as many layers I'd say you can do one large terry cloth layer and then the inner core I'd say you can even maybe go two or three I don't suggest going for because that's really thick and then you'll have this gigantic core pad and it's not going to be very comfortable. So I hope you guys loved this tutorial, my new and improved tutorial on the menstrual pad. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Share it with friends that want to know how to make these for themselves using an embroidery file. This file, as well as the new updated version of this pad, is up and available for sale at my Etsy shop at Needles EC, capital N, E E D L E S, capital E, capital C. The link is down in the description box below. Tell me what you think about this, and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye!